Good evening, church. We're so glad that you're here. Would you stand to your feet? We're going to worship together tonight. Let me tell you, we've been all around the world in the last few weeks, and I can tell you first and foremost that there is no place like home. We love being in this house. We love you. We love this family, and we just are so excited to get to spend time with the Lord tonight. Father, we just worship you. Lord, we thank you for the freedom in this house. Lord, we thank you for your presence. Lord, and right now, we just lift you up high above this place. Lord, we ask that you would be exalted in this place, that you would draw near to our hearts as we draw near to you in worship. Lord, we want to know you more. We pray that this place would be like a river that springs out into this community and makes changes. Lord, we, we just want to be your vessels. We want to be a wellspring of living water like Jesus prophesied in the New Testament. That out of our bellies would flow rivers of living water and we would see your kingdom come in this place. That the water of your spirit would come to refresh every dry and weary heart, Lord. We're thankful tonight for your presence. In Jesus' name. Stop it! 
presence. Tonight, we want your presence near to us, Jesus. Yes. Lord, we're, we're, we're waiting on you tonight. Would you come? Would you break every chain in this place, Lord, every stronghold, every burden that's been held upon the people? Father God, we just ask that you would break the yoke of heaviness and release your joy into this place. Because in your presence is fullness of joy.
Let your freedom fill this place. Let your freedom fill this place. Let your freedom fill this place. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. shame and regrets that they carried from their past, things that they couldn't seem to let go of, and the Lord was saying, it's okay, you can lay that at my feet. You don't have to carry this any longer. And I just see the Lord releasing freedom from shame in this place tonight, that there is a freedom in Him, the work, His finished work that He did on the cross that releases you from your sin, that takes the heavy burden and throws it into a sea of forgetfulness as far as the east is from the west. He's forgotten the sins. He's forgotten the shame of your past. And you can step into redemption. So right now, if that's you, if you're saying, man, I, I just need to let go of some things. I just need to let go of some regrets. I just I encourage you tonight to lay them down at his feet. No more shame. No more regrets. As far as the west is from.
I just feel to do something here. We're going to stay in the same vein for just a moment. Paul Reinhardt, come here for just a minute, if you would. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me while I was over there. You've been going through so many challenges. You're in a better place than you were, but, but you're not where he wants to take you yet. And he said to tell you that tonight is your night. I mean, I was sitting there just out of nowhere. The Spirit of the Lord just spoke to me and said, tonight's Paul's night. Tonight's the next level night. Wow. You've come to a new place, and God says he's putting you a new cloak upon you. He's putting a new, a new, I mean, just a brand new outlook for you. So in the name of Jesus right now, I break the stronghold of the enemy that has come against your life. In the midst of this atmosphere of freedom, Father God, I thank you that Paul is free. And he that the Son has set free is free indeed. And God says, all of those ministries that I placed inside of you so many years ago, I'm ready to unpack them and ready to reveal them and ready to release them. I'm ready to use you in a mighty way, son. So get ready, get ready, get ready. You've taken some steps. You've moved out of the old and you're moving into the new. Both your house, but your spirit too. I'm moving in you, says the Spirit of the Lord. I'm moving, I'm moving. Yes, in a brand new accord. I've got new stuff for you. I've got new things to do in you. I'm shifting, I'm sifting. I'm redeeming and I'm esteeming, says the Lord. I'm taking your spirit to a whole nother level, says the Lord. So get ready, son. Tonight is your night. This is the night of freedom. So be free, 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 free. Woo! Wow! Wow! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Sing it again. I just want to decree this over you right now. The blessing of the Lord. God says, I'm doing a deep healing in you tonight. I'm doing a deep healing in every organ in your body, throughout your entire frame right now. God's doing a total makeover for you tonight. He's healing and he's restoring where there's been pain, where there's been discomfort, when you thought, I can't even go any further. It's almost like at times the wind has been knocked out of you, but I saw God resuscitating and breathing life over you tonight. He's giving you life and he's giving you a new pep in your step. Wow. Wow. I just see the Holy Spirit just, just almost, it's almost like he's walking alongside you and walking you walking your steps because it's almost like you feel like I can't take one more step I can't do it anymore I, I don't have the energy I don't have the strength but God says I'm giving you renewed strength tonight and renewed uh, favor I just see it. it's like a shaft of light over the top of you right now so just lift up your hands and begin to receive it Cynthia just receive it in the name of Jesus right now I decree it over you right now be be free spirit soul and body healed from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet right now in Jesus name wow Wow. Wow. <laughs> the enemy thought you were down and out for the count. The enemy thought you were down and out for the count. He thought you had you. He had you on your deathbed. But God said, I walked into the room. And I breathed life over you, even in that hospital room. I raised you up because you have more to do, daughter. You have more to do. You will not be on the back burner. You will not be set aside. I am lifting you up and raising you up in this hour. You have a testimony to share. And more than just a testimony to share, I have placed healing in your hands and deliverance on your tongue, says the Lord. You are my daughter. 
You are my daughter, and I am strengthening you this night for the journey. There are moments where you think, ah, I can't even think straight. It's foggy. It's foggy. I can't even think straight. But God says, I'm clearing the cobwebs of your mind right now. God says, I'm causing even the, the, the ability for the, it's like a, it's, it's, I just see in your brain. Your brain is functioning and processing at a higher level right now. God says, I'm energizing your ability to think and to think creative, creatively. God says, I'm giving you the ability to speak on another level tonight. So in the name of Jesus, I release the power of God over you to heal you from the inside out, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet tonight in Jesus' name. Woo. Wow. I brought you out. And I brought you out with a shout, says the Lord. I brought you out like I brought the, Egypt, the Hebrews out of the land of Egypt. I brought you out and you came out with more than you went in. You came out victorious and you came out with reward. God says, I paid off your debts and I loosed and liberated you in the natural. And I am loosing and liberating you in the spirit, says the Lord. So get ready. Money is coming into your hands for kingdom purposes. Woo, wow, wow. Wow, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sing it again. Thank you, Jesus. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. I'm free. dropping off of people right now, just chains that have held you back, resistance and opposition. You feel like in some ways your gifts have been boxed in. You feel in some ways like your destiny has kind of been in an incarcerated place, like you've been locked in. God said tonight, I'm opening the doors wide. I'm opening the windows wide, says the Lord. I'm breaking you out, and the chains that have held you bound are dropping off even this night, says the Lord. I'm loosing and liberating. I'm emancipating, says the Lord. I'm emancipating the incarcerated. I am loosing and liberating those who have felt like they are stuck and stung and stranded, and I am releasing you into the, into the, the next phase. Get ready. The next phase is upon you, says the Lord. Get ready. Get your heart ready. Get your attitude ready. Get your finances ready. Get your house ready. Get your stuff ready. Get your mindset ready. Get your clothing ready. Prepare, says the Lord. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. You're about to birth something in the Spirit. Get the room for the baby ready. Get the room for the baby ready, says the Lord. I'm getting ready to do something in your house. I'm getting ready to do something in your home. Think spiritually, not naturally, says the Lord. Think on another level. I'm ready to do something big. I'm looking for dreamers, says the Lord. I'm looking for dreamers this night. Dreamers who say, God, I'll dream your dream. I'll do whatever you call me to do. I'll go where you call me to go. Whew, wow. Woo. He's calling for dreamers tonight. And he's breaking, he's breaking off the... It's, it's almost, for some of you, it's like a confidence level. It's like, it's, it's like you, you, you really were strong at one point, and now it's like your confidence is not where it needs to be. God says, come boldly before the throne of grace. 
Rise up, man of God. Rise up, woman of God. Rise up, people of God. Be strong in the power of his might. Shake off the lethargy, the complacency, and the apathy. Shake it off this night, says the Lord, and press. You're about to run, so go ahead and exercise because you're getting ready to run. You're getting ready to run with a new momentum and a new speed in the spirit, says the Lord. Woo! Ha-ha. I'm handing out superpowers tonight. I'm handing out superpowers. I'm handing out gifts that are unrestrained and free to flow. So get ready, get ready, get ready. It's time to know. You need to know what you need to know so you can be ready when it's time to go, says the Lord. Woo! Wow. Come on, lift up your hearts. Lift up your voices right now. Somebody begin to worship him right now. I want you to begin to see with the eyes of the Spirit the things that have been opposing you, the resistance, and it's moving. It's shifting right now. Everything that has been holding you back, it's shifting right now. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on, Hunter. Wow, when he was talking about shifting, there's a shifting, things are shifting around you. I saw, <laughs> it was like I was just standing there and all of a sudden there was like just dry, parched ground. And then the ground just started like shifting in places and, and, and the parched places were like, almost like, holes that started not holes but just like shifted open spaces in the ground and and I was like what's happening what's happening as if almost like an earthquake where the ground was starting to move around me and then all of a sudden those spaces filled up with water sparkling clear water and then out of that water came bursting forth the most beautiful vegetation all around me. And I just know that sometimes we, we are afraid of the shifting. Sometimes we're afraid of the shifting. We don't know what comes with the shifting. Sometimes we're even afraid to jump into the river because when you jump into the river, you're, you're not walking on your own two feet anymore, but, but in order to go with the current, 
you have to get off the, you have to get off the edge and let him take you where he wants you to go and sometimes we're afraid of the shifting because in the shifting sometimes we don't we don't know or see what's coming but I know he prayed just now that that he would give us clear vision that we would see and in the shifting I pray that he'll give you the clear vision to see and then in the shifting there comes provision because oh. everything in the river of life lives it produces it thrives so just come to the river just come to the river. Taste and see is good. Oh. oh, come to the water, all who are thirsty, come and drink, and come to the table.
God is the only thing that can quench our thirst. I don't know if you've been desperately thirsty or something, but maybe you've run a long jog or you went on a long walk or you were a part of a, a team at one time and your body suddenly craves while you're trying to catch your breath and your mouth is completely dry. The first thing you want to reach for is a Dr. Pepper, right? I don't think so. The first thing you want to reach for is not a Coca-Cola or a Sprite, even though you like that sometimes. When you have exercised and you're perspiring, the only thing that your body truly wants at that moment is something that's hydrating, something like water. And so many times we don't realize that when we're saying, Lord, we thirst for you, we're saying, God, you're the only thing that can quench the desire that I am satisfied, that I'm so desperately craving. Lord, my mouth is dry without you. Father, my spirit's dry without you. Lord, I'm, I'm dying without you. You're everything that gives me life. My soul is quenched, Lord, only with you. That's why, Lord, only you will do. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of kids experiencing God in a lot of fun ways today. By the way, parents, uh, apparently because we had so much fun, you can be seated for just a moment, but don't leave this attitude of worship. Because uh, we had so much fun and it took so much work and investment to get the uh, Fall Fest going earlier. Um, 
I guess we don't have teachers tonight, so we're going to keep the service shorter. Um, but I'm, I believe it's good for kids to be able to experience the presence of God with us, and I think this is a beautiful opportunity for that. That's not our norm, so believe us uh, when we say we'll have children's classes again next Sunday night. This is uh, just out of the norm for us. But if the kids were here earlier, they got a taste of the candy, right? And uh, I think it's amazing that God, we can experience God, we can hear God, the voice of God. We can see the movements of God. You know, we can touch the tangible presence of God when He's in the room. And not only that, you can taste and see that the Lord is good. You can smell the aroma of a sweet savor in an offering presented unto the Lord. I mean, in every one of our sense gates, we can experience God. And we taste and see the Lord is good. I don't know about you, but when you're craving something really, really good, I don't just gulp it down like my dog does. I take my dog out, I throw a treat, and he just swallows it whole. I'm going, you can't even enjoy that. You didn't enjoy that. When I get something that's good, I get some chocolate cake. Man, it's going to sit. It's gonna, I'm going to savor the flavor of that chocolate cake for a little bit before I swallow it. Each bite of that delicacy, right? And it's like that with God. We have to chew on His Word and experience it because He is inseparable from, from His promise. His promises are inseparable from Him. And when I, when I begin to ponder on His words, I recognize that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word and the Father are inseparable. He is His Word, and His Word is Him. Come on, somebody. When I, when I begin to savor the flavor of God's goodness, it's because I'm palating Him. I'm reminding myself. I'm meditating on it. I'm considering this promise he's given us as a delicacy. Yeah. Taste and see and see that you are good. Come on, just sing it one more time. Thinking about that, telling him that you, Lord, you want to experience him. see that you are good. I will taste and see that you are good. You're good to me. Oh, I will taste and see that you are good. Oh, I will taste and see that you are good. I will taste and see. say this uh, we were talking with the young adults and Cleopas and the two disciples are walking on the road to Emmaus and Jesus is standing before them and yet yet they don't recognize it right away and they, they say eventually did our hearts not burn within us did our hearts not burn within us yeah. you know I can't get any light without the without something you know burning, right? Even the even the sun itself is burning gases that glow, and and so we have we have no light that that illuminates the darkness unless we allow the presence of God to begin to burn up the chaff that's within us and to begin to burn us with a passion, 
that refines us. Gold is refined in a fire. The illumination of God's light does not come without a cost. It burns up the places with us, allowing, allowing Him to shine through us. I'm just, I'm touching on my message already. But He says, did our hearts not burn within us? Sometimes when we go through the challenging, we look for God wrapped in an expectation that we shouldn't have to go through any suffering. And they said, we had hoped, in other words, we had expected, you can go there in your Bible and read it, we had expected Him to be the Redeemer of Israel. He was the Redeemer of Israel. They were not wrong. But in their minds, their expectation of the Redeemer of Israel was that He would overthrow the Roman rule, that He would overthrow the occupation of Rome, and He would usher in a governance, a civil governance, which we will eventually see in the New Jerusalem, but they expected it to come with His first coming. His, their expectations betrayed the realization that God was in front of them, Jesus was in front of them the whole time. When we walk through challenges, if we're not careful, we will say, God, where are you? God, where are you right now? They were asking the question, Jesus, where are you? Messiah, where are you? Because their expectations of who God was betrayed the realization that He was in front of them the whole time. Our expectations have to change to recognize God is in the midst of our challenge, in the midst of our moments where we are disappointed because our expectations betrayed the reality that God presented us with. However, what God never did, He never left us nor forsook us. Jesus is often right in front of us. Jesus is often right beside us. Jesus is often right behind us. Jesus is overshadowing us with His glory, His eminence, His goodness, His provision, His protection. He's undergirding us. You understand what I'm saying? We ask God, where are you in this? And He says, I'm right here. You just thought I was going to show up differently than I've shown up in your present existence. And God has shown up and shown enough. He's showing out. You just have to recognize it. When He's burning within you, when He's burning within you, He doesn't look like you thought He was going to look sometimes, but He's always with you. Come on, give Him your expectations. Allow His your expectations to be changed in the imminence of His glory, saying, God, I thought things would look differently at this moment. I thought I would be in a different place. I thought I would be given a different set of circumstances, but now I'm realizing that you were always where you said you would be. You were always there, and that was on the third day. It was on the third day. It was there on the third day. They had already given up, but yet the time had not expired, and He was there when He said He would be there. Listen, you've given up on God, and yet He, that you thought that, that the time has expired. If you're here your time hasn't been expired and Jesus is still in front of you he's in front of you he's right beside you he's talking with you and you haven't even realized it a friend came beside you and said don't give up have hope and God was speaking through them but you didn't realize he was speaking through them and you turned on the TV and suddenly a message of inspiration filled your life and you said God where are you well he was speaking to you through the TV and suddenly you showed up at church and a song that Consuela sang suddenly gives you hope that in the midst of your circumstances, God is with you. Listen, you've got to adjust your expectations because God wants to show up and show out. He wants to show up and show out. He is the Redeemer. He is the Reviser. He is the Reviver. Somebody just somebody, just tell you, Jesus, I see you now. Come on, tell him, Jesus, I taste your goodness now. Because his goodness was not wrapped up in the circumstance. His goodness was wrapped up that he'll bring you out of the circumstance. He might have allowed you to go through it, but you didn't go through it, you grew through it. You didn't just, you're not just there to go through it, you're there to grow through it. And he was... He was stretching those faith. He was stretching their faith 
because there would be a time when he would send the Holy Spirit. He would send the Holy Spirit, and they would not see him, but they would seize him, and he would become one with them. The Holy Spirit's in this room tonight. We have to adjust our expectations. The Holy Spirit showed up. Some of us would be more excited if Donald Trump showed up. Uh, we would think that it was more wonderful, more incredible. Some of us have put more trust in a president, more trust in a party, more trust in a government system. And he's saying, look, 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 hope doesn't come through government systems. We, it's not that we should give up on our government. It's not that we shouldn't start casting our ballots and casting our crowns and representing the value that God gave us. I'm just saying that our hope is in his governance and he might betray expectation father we want to see you when you walk in the room lord we don't want to miss you when you're there we don't want to miss you when you're right in front of us we don't want to miss you father god so taste and taste and see that you are good to me. You're good to me. Yeah. You're good to me. You always fulfill your promise even if the promise that I expected looked differently when it was fulfilled than I originally anticipated. Father, you always fulfill your promise. You always fulfill your promise. You always fulfill your promise. You always fulfill your pledge. Oh, that's why I can trust you. That's why I can trust you. Oh, that's why I trust you. That's why I trust in you. Jesus. I feel impressed to invite the ushers to come right now. One of the promises that God gave us is that if we would entrust our tithe and our offering to him, he would fulfill his promise. He would fulfill his promise that he gave to us in Malachi. He said, trust trust that I would not open the storehouses of heaven and pour out my blessing upon you he said test me in this test me taste me test me and taste me go ahead open up let me in open up savor the flavor open up I'm good Listen, if you want to give right now, you can text to give. Text the amount to 866-756-7501. Also text Trinity Gospel Temple TGT and the amount given to 73256. I want to pray for this offering right now. Just raise your hand if you want an offering envelope if they haven't given you one already. But I believe that when we tithe and when we give our offering, it is an expectation. It's wrapped in expectation. It's bursting in joy. It's okay. That's faith. Faith is an expectation and a hope that God is going to show up in ways that you didn't anticipate it. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, I, we're not just here for an offering, but Lord, we offer our lives to you. And with this attached value, is a portion of our lives that we worked and sacrificed and served and we give this unto you as unto the Lord we give this even in this offering as unto the Lord saying Father God you use it use it for your name use it for the declaration of the proclamation of Jesus the Messiah who has come who is risen and he lives in me Father we thank you some are giving out of their abundance 
and others out of their need. And I plead you, Father God, to give generously back to them, Father, they might continue to bless others. Oh, we thank you tonight that you're in this place and you're right in front of us. So we give you all the glory in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, everybody said. Amen. Come on, let's, let's sing one more time as we're giving. I'm caught up in your presence. Oh, I just want to sit here at your feet. I'm caught up in this holy moment. I never want to leave. Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Oh, Jesus, you don't owe me anything. Oh, more than anything that you can do, I just want you. And I'm sorry when I've just gone through the motions. I'm sorry when I just sang another song. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. And I'm sorry when I've come with my agenda. I'm sorry when I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we started. I open up my heart to you. Caught up in your presence oh, I just want to sit here at your feet I'm caught up in this holy moment I never want to leave I'm not here for blessings, Jesus Oh, I'm not here for blessings. Oh, Jesus, you don't owe me anything more than anything that you can do. I just want you. I just want you.
never want to leave I'm not here for blessings Jesus you don't owe me anything more turn this into a furnace of prayer for just a moment. All over the country right now, there are people that are trying to bring uh, honor to the enemy, and there are evil practices, which we sh you know, shouldn't even be speaking of, but I want to bring honor to God for just a moment, so let's do that. Lord, we worship you. Come on, we worship you. Lord, we just want you to want you to service to you. Father, we're reminded that the early church came together to pull down strongholds, to bind the enemies that have tried to prevail against God and His church. And we silence the enemy. We muzzle the mouths of the enemy right now. We command silence to come upon you right now in the Spirit. All of you enemies of God and the Holy One of Israel, muzzle the mouths of the enemy. Even this night, even this night, Father God, we pray an escape in a way of escape for those that have been ensnared by the powers of darkness, those whom they seek, Father God, to use as sacrifices. Give them a way of escape, Lord. Loose the bonds, Father God. Lord, you were all on the tree that no person would ever have to be sacrificed. You even gave freedom to Isaac, who was laid down. The seed of Abraham was willing, and in that you chose him in the seed of Abraham, Jesus, to be the one that was cursed for us. To reverse the curse, even this night, give freedom to the captive. You came to set the captives free. Lord, deliver them. Oh, my God, my God, my God, we praise you. We exalt you and we magnify you. We lift you up above all things. God, as you are the King of kings and the Lords of lords, there is none before you, none after you, none beside you. You are it. God, we praise you and we exalt you above all things, God. 
God, we honor you above all things. God, we, we pray that your glory shine through, God. That we would begin to exalt you properly, God. That we would look at not our circumstances, but the opportunity of how we get to praise you and honor you and lift you up because your name is that, the name, the name above all names, that we would glorify and exalt. That's all I can hear. Glorify church, exalt church, glorify church, exalt church. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. You may be feeling dry and weary, but even the desert season has to end. Even the desert season has to end. That there is hope and joy. The storm that was sent to kill, steal, and destroy is actually a restoration of peace, hope, and love. And it is from our Father. So it's this time where people choose to begin to look at the dark things. This time of year that people choose to look at dark things and think it's not not anything crazy. Well, we're not we're not into the to the dark worship. So we're just trick or treating, we're dressing up like this or that or the other. But God says, why even entertain those things? Why even why even think that that's a, a fun idea to entertain demons, to entertain principalities. But there is a river. It's the river of life, Jesus. It's the river of life, and it's flowing. It's the river of life. Flowing, yes, the river of life. Get into the river, folks. It's flowing. You have the opportunity to jump in and get in, or you can sit on the bank and watch it wash by. You have the opportunity. So, church, we exalt and we magnify. We exalt and we magnify. We're not going in just toe deep. We're not going in ankle deep. We're not going in knee deep have to give him all of us because the lukewarm Christianity is no Christianity at all. It's not a relationship at all. It's an idea that sounds good to you, but when you give yourself up and when you sacrifice your own self and tell your flesh, no, I won't do what you want to do. Paul says, I don't do the things I should do, but I do the things I don't want to do. If we can get behind the word of God and use it as a lamp to our feet and a light to our path and a solid rock that it is meant to be. Things around us will begin to change. So exalt and magnify. Exalt and magnify. Steal, kill, destroy. That's child's play. Our God is the God of God and the King of kings, the Lord of lords. Adonai, Elohim, God, we thank you. We honor you and we magnify you. As we were praying, I heard in the spirit, who are you? You know, it was like the enemy of God was saying, who are you to come against me? And I, I felt in my spirit the, the presence of the church raise up and said, I am no one. But the mighty one of Israel, he lives inside of me. And greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And then I saw this, this camera pull back in the heavens. And I saw the enemy that looked like a bull at, at, at before us, at, at facing off with us. And suddenly I saw him as an ant. I saw the enemy as an ant. And the Lord said, the Lord just said, I am mighty to save. The train of my, his robe fills the temple. Pastor Digger, come pray for just a moment. Come pray, come pray. There's power in our prayer church. Father God, we thank you. We thank you, Father, that we have light in our life and not darkness. We thank you, God, that even during this season of darkness, we can share the light with others. 
Father, may people find us as a lighthouse that we can share the truth of the gospel with them. May we be able to proclaim what you, who you are and what you've done on the cross for us, Father. May we not take it for granted that the blood that was shed is for the forgiveness of our sins. Father God, may we remind and declare and, 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 and daily of what, what you've done for us, Father. God, may you give us a zeal to share the news with others out on the street about who you are and what you've done for us, God. God, may, may this church here, Lord, be filled with people that need to hear the, the news of Jesus Christ. God, we call them in from the east. We call them in from the west. We call them from the north and the south, Father. Well, Lord, we ask for your blood to cover them tonight, God. We ask that even right now, those that are celebrating darkness, that you will shed the light in their heart, that they will come to know who you are, Father. God, we ask that you will bring clarity. We ask that you will bring clarity to their mind, Father. God, shall tell me right now, there's somebody in this house that you have been fighting a battle that you don't understand. God says, I'm trying to bring clarity to you. I'm trying to bring a peace of mind to you. God says, I am bringing you to a season where I'm defining and refining who you are. God says, enough of this walking through and trying to figure it out on your own. You're trying to make, you're trying to take this round peg and fit it into a square hole. And God says, I am your God. I will clear your mind. I will walk through you with this. You are not alone. God says, you're a mighty warrior. There's warriors in his house tonight. God says, lift up your shield of faith and your sword and begin to fight for me. I hear it clearly that he says, there's so many warriors here. Don't, 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 don't back down. You may be purring, you're not pussycats, but your lions begin to roar in your battle. I believe the enemy's shrieking right now. The enemy's just shrieking right now. I want to read a scripture and we're going to keep praying, so don't go anywhere. But 1 John, if you will, chapter, I believe it's chapter 1. Let's read this together. I, how many believe that the how many believe that, the, that those working in darkness just come together and they hear a cute message and then they go home? The enemies, servants of darkness, they they are not about acute things, right? We need to be more powerful and more strategic than the enemy. We need to be in the church, recognize that the, the prayer is like a furnace. We burn. The light of God comes through this in the the, the the, the passion of our prayer in the koinonia, which is the word uh, uh, in the scripture for intimacy or fellowship with God that, that's represented there, means that we're coming into oneness with Him and in Him we're able to produce the power to push back and to repeal the darkness because it's out of that passionate understanding, the koinonia, the, the, the fellowship with God that suddenly that light. Darkness is no match for light. Darkness only exists where light does not exist. And we're pushing it back. This is the message that we've heard from him and proclaim to you. This is what I want you to know. We don't just come to hear a message. We come that we might attach our spirit to the word of God and then proclaim it and declare it. The message of hope is grand. It's great. But it's even greater when we proclaim it. We attach ourselves to it. And then we get in union with what the Father's saying. And we stand there projecting it in the world. This is the message we have heard from Him and proclaim. Don't just hear the word. Proclaim the word tomorrow. As you're going home. As you get to work tomorrow. As you're going home. That God is light. And in Him is no darkness at all. And God is illumination and phosphorus. It is the ability to bring exposure to every work. It is the ability to give us direction. Without light, every one of us is blind. But the light of God gives us the vision to see in difficult places. He is giving His church purpose and destiny and projection. And in Him is no darkness at all. Keep going. And if we say we have fellowship with Him, that's the word fellowship Koinonia, which also means intimacy. If we say we have intimacy with him while we walk in darkness, we lie. 
So if God wants the church in this hour to stop walking, which means living, which means breathing, which means doing and having a lifestyle of darkness. When we are in intimate places with God, we forsake other lovers. We forsake other desires. We forsake the desires of the flesh, the lusts of the flesh, the love of the flesh, which is no love at all. So that we do, we are not like those who lie and do not practice the truth. Verse 7. But if we walk in the light, come on, how many, how many like to walk in darkness? Oh, I tricked you, I tricked you. We don't like to walk in darkness. You don't know where you're going. You're prone to stumble. You're prone to hit your pinky toe on the side of the bed. Listen, we don't like this place because everyone's blind without light. Nobody can see. But we walk in the light as He is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. You understand what that means? We say, why are we praying tonight? Because we have koinonia, we have intimacy, we have fellowship. We are able to produce more. Where one can chase a thousand, two can put a thousand to flight. Where two or more are gathered in His name, what? There He is in the midst of us. When we are one in Christ, suddenly we come into fellowship with one another. When we come into intimacy with God, suddenly we come into oneness with each other. And Jesus prayed, Lord, I pray that they are one even as I and the Father are one. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. What we're proclaiming right now is the blood of Jesus over every sin. Some of you think you've gone so far that God can't touch you. God can't use you. No, He cleanses us from some sin all sin verse 8 if we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us so we have to accept that there was sin in us we have to confess that it's that was there we have to present it to God that we had a desire and a lust of the flesh for those things and then say God but I'm forsaking the other lovers right now what the church is doing is thinking that we can love God and I have to forsake in America, the general church in America. But God is saying, forsake the walk of darkness. Forsake walking in darkness. Don't bring glory and idolize witches. When we, when we put on a costume, it's because we like the costume, right? Because we're, we're bringing attention to the costume because it's, it's something that we appreciate. We are, in a sense, we're elevating it. Don't, don't walk in darkness. Don't let your killed children walk in darkness. Don't let them walk in, in, in those evil things and put on evil costumes. But we confess our sin. He's faithful and just to cleanse us. He's cleansing. He's cleansing. Father God, cleanse this place. Cleanse this city. Cleanse the high places. Father God, cleanse those. Father God, in the secret places. Bring your light to bring exposure. And save those who were hidden in darkness. Shirley, come on, pray for just a moment. We're turning this into a furnace right now of prayer. As I was praying earlier, I just felt like the Lord was saying, searching hearts, searching hearts. And so many people are searching in so many different directions. But there is one, only one that will satisfy and there's a mixing. There's a mixing. People are mixing. You can't have Jesus and any other God. The Lord says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. And that means literally in front of his face, waving him in front of his face. There's one God. You can't serve two gods. It's impossible. There's one God, one God, Jehovah, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. And him alone will you serve. And God is not a woman. God is a man. God is he is the Almighty El Shaddai. He is everything. He is perfect. He is whole, and He is complete, and He is perfect. And you will not find satisfaction in any other religion, any other God, because they can't. They can't. There, there is no one to compare, no one to even come near close to Jehovah God, to Jesus. So searching, searching, searching. Give your life over to Jesus. Search no more. Search no more. Run to the Lord. Run to the Lord. As Pastor Michael said, there's nothing that you have done that will disqualify you from falling on your knees 
and saying, Lord, I need you. Jesus alone, I need you. He will clean your life up. There's nothing he can't fix, nothing he can't heal. So I thank you, Father. Lord, you showed me too that this is a season where people try to scare themselves and put fear. But you said perfect love casts out all fear. And you are perfect love. You are shalom. You are peace. You don't have peace. You are peace. So I thank you, Father, that you're doing a cleansing. You're doing a purification. Lord, you said you're coming after a pure, unwrinkled, spotless bride and that you are purifying your church, Father God. I thank you for convicting every one of us into repentance for those things, Lord Father, that some of us realize and some of us don't even realize, hey, this is not of God. So I thank you, Father, for visiting us in our day seasons and our night seasons, Lord, and, and just ministering, ministering to us, Lord. Father, I thank you that your church is strengthening. It's rising up, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord, for drawing us in by your Holy Spirit unto cleanliness, unto purity, unto purification. Lord, I thank you that, as he said in the scriptures, Lord, you can't walk a fence. You can't straddle a fence. You must give your life over to Jesus completely. So I thank you, Father, that you are bringing us to that place, Lord that we will go out. This is not a place to just sit and hear a good message. This is a place to get in, empowered, to go out and tell others in the marketplace and in the neighborhoods who he is and what he's done for you, what he can do for them, that there is no other. So I thank you, Father, that you're, that you're preparing us to be those messengers, Lord, that we're supposed to be. I thank you for preparing and softening and chilling the hearts of those who need to hear, Father God. I lift up those who have been hurt by the church in prior times, Father God, because I was one of them. But you, you drew me, and by your Holy Spirit, you showed me that, that my problem wasn't with you, that you loved me all the time, that you were waiting for me to come to you. And folks, that's what he's doing with you. He loves you. He desires relationship with you. He desires that intimacy. And there's nothing you can't talk to him about. No hurt, no wound, no issue, no problem, no addiction that you can't say, Jesus, I need your help with this. Because he is there for you, with you, always, always, always. There's no depth. He said, there, his word says that he pulled us up out of the miry clay. So I thank you, Father God, that no matter what somebody's going through today, you don't have the answer. You are the answer. And I thank you, Lord, that you're pulling us out of fear, that you're bringing us into that place, Lord Father, right in your bosom where the enemy can't even touch us anymore. So I thank you, Father, for drawing all these people in, Lord. I thank you for strengthening your church. I thank you for building us up as a body, Lord Father, that we will be the messengers, Lord Father, that we will be the examples, Lord Father, that you have desired us to be, that you've designed us to be. And Father, I give you praise, honor, and glory, Father. You said this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because every day that you made, is about you and for you and not the enemy so we thank you that you've already defeated the enemy you made a show of him openly you soundly defeated him and you showed everyone so we give you honor praise and glory father in jesus holy name thank you lord amen i just i just hope you understand the significance of prayer don't think that our prayers are not availing much the prayers of a righteous man and woman avail much. The effectual, fervent prayers of a righteous man and woman avails much. That's why it's so important that we walk in this light, walk in this holiness, so that it's of a righteous man and woman. It presents ourselves in right standing with God so we can receive his protection and operate in kingdom advantage over the enemy and claim the benefits of heaven as citizens of heaven we are entitled to everything that is there here because he prayed father that your kingdom would what come and your will would be done he said you're not of this world 
you are citizens of heaven. Wherever citizens of heaven, like we have come together tonight, converge in one place in an agreement, we are, we are actually instituting the kingdom, the basilelia of, of the church, the ecclesia, coming together. We're saying that heaven comes here. Because the Romans, whenever, even if they were not in Rome, wherever the citizens of Rome came together, that word meant that they were there to establish a quorum so that Rome could operate. Do you understand what I'm saying? They could legislate, they could operate wherever they came together. So when we came together tonight and we prayed together, we have legislated in the heavenly realm. We have come together to bring His kingdom come and His will be done. And you, when you walk in holiness, because there's no sin in that place that's permitted or excused, it, you are walking in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Holiness is bringing the remnants together. And Hunter, just stand right here. Just stand right here the, at the front of this altar as I'm closing tonight. And JC, you come over here. Just stand right there. Right, right there. Perfect. JC, you come right over here. What's happening when we talked about this, this koinonia, the fellowship with God. As both of us are here, especially even with husband and wife, but we are the church. Go over there. Walk that way. You're going to walk... As both of us, as, I don't even, I don't know where she is right now. She doesn't know where I am, but she's facing, Hunter represents God in this analogy. And, and she's quickly turning, turning towards God, turning towards God. And we feel so separate. I feel so distant, you know. How can a woman understand how I feel? She might say, how can a man understand how I feel? She came from different places. I came from different places. Okay, you understand what I'm, the analogy I'm making right now. But as we step towards God... We move towards Him. As we step towards the Father, we say, I want more of you, God. I want less of me. I want more of you in my life. I want more of your kingdom. I want more of you come. I want more of the Father. And I, and I get into oneness with Father God. I get into oneness with Father God. Suddenly, suddenly we come into a, a nearness with each other. Where the world says we're too different to understand each other. We're too different to comprehend each other. We're too different to relate. Suddenly, in the, underneath the Godhead, we, are now, we now emerge. The cross is the bridge that brings us together. We come into oneness in Koinonia with fellowship with God. And suddenly, we're in fellowship with one another. That's where the church is coming right now, in oneness with a fellowship with God. And even though we said we have theological differences and doctrinal differences, when it matters most, we want God. We want His sovereign salvation. We want the light of His glory. And He is bringing us into oneness. Come on, let's close this tonight. Everybody stand at your feet right now. Thank you, Jay-Z. Thank you, Hunter. God's moving. You're gonna, many of you are going to get woke up tonight. And you're going to say, why am I wide awake? And it's for the purpose of praying. There are servants of darkness, and they are only servants of darkness. They were there at one time because they believed that they could possess the power until they realized that the power possessed them. And they became slaves of the enemy and think that they're too far from the goodness of God. But I'm telling you, I believe that through our prayers, Jesus is going to show up in dreams going to show up in visions to them and that the enemy is going to startle so badly that they're going to get queasy and that the cross of Jesus Christ is going to protect them from the enemy that they're afraid of. They think they're too far gone. I'm telling you, I believe that there are people that have come to this very house in order to bring division. They have come in order to try to stop the move of God and even they are going to find themselves bowed down in submission to the King of Kings who will liberate them and set them free. You say, how do, I, how, how do you believe for that? Because I've already seen God do it. He did it with Bishop Herschel Gamble. He did it before. We have people that have come to this church as witches sent to church to, to curse the church, and they realize there's a greater power. There's a greater power. There's a higher power. Why would I serve this lesser power when there's a greater power who's ruling over me? It's a man who God called to set up a tent at a new age, basically flea market. 
He set up a tent. And suddenly, strange things began to happen. He was just there praying. God said, set up the tent. Set it up and just pray. And all of a sudden, people started going to the head of the, the organizer of the event. And they said, we can't operate. I, I, can, I can't move. I want you to move my tent. All these people that were in the general vicinity of where the man of God went and put his tent up, they all started going to the organ and saying, you got to move my tent. I can't be there. I can't operate. I can't hear in the, in, the, in the spiritual realm. I can't see in the spiritual realm. I'm not getting anything. I'm not going to make any money. I have to, you've got to move me. And guess what? He they brought him in and he said, sir, I don't understand this. I've never had this problem before. But what's going on? He said, what are you doing and what's going on? And he said, sir, it has been my experience that when a lesser power comes around a greater power, that it has to submit and be bound to the higher power. All I can tell you is it's not my fault that they have a lesser power and I have the greatest power. And he goes, well, it makes sense. I don't know what to tell you. He said, it's not my fault. It's their fault. He said, well, okay, it's their fault. Listen, you serve a greater power, and greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. The light of God is in you, and you're not called to hide it. You're called to confide in it and to shine. Come on, let that luminance shine. Let it shine. We're going to sing this song on our way out. I, go ahead, go ahead. It's all right. I just want you but nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do I just want you Nothing else Nothing else Nothing else will do Father, we thank you for your people tonight. Lord we're, Lord, we're learning that when we come into oneness with you, we come into oneness with each other, and we're united, Father God, in our intercession and in our prayer to see your kingdom come and your will be done, that your glory will be manifested and can't know how, and that your spirit would have acquisition of everywhere that we tread, everywhere that we move, and everywhere that we reign with you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Reign, R-E-I-G-N, reign, rulership and dominion and power to the light of God that emanates through you. Right now, if you don't know Jesus and you want to know him, he loves you. You can never be too far from him. You've never been too far from him. Right now, just say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I accept your love for me. Shine through me. I believe you're the son of God. That you died for me, for my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins, and I acknowledge that you rose again, and you live forevermore, and now I ask you to live in me. Be my Savior. Be my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 This is not about just coming and going and fulfilling an obligation. This is about submitting to God, and some of you are about to hear very acutely what God is saying, and it's going to drive you out of your comfort zone, and it's going to make you uncomfortable, but when you hear from God, we are getting ready to walk into an explosion of testimonies, the likes of which, if they, when you come and you bring them, we'll have to extend services at times, okay? We'll have to extend services, so get more uncomfortable, and get ready to receive the impartation of God's glory, His goodness, and the light of God that shines through you. God bless you this week. We love you. We'll see you soon.